Here we're going to look at a nice integral involving the logarithm and a rational function. And we're going to use this nice trick which will exploit some symmetry that we will force inside of the problem. And so the trick goes like this. The integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x over the quadratic polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to negative the integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x over the quadratic polynomial that is formed with switching the constant term with the x squared term. So in other words, we've got cx squared plus bx plus a. Now, we're going to prove this, but before we do so, I want to notice that it's nice if a is equal to c, because if a is equal to c, that means this integral is equal to its negative, but the only number that's equal to its negative is 0. So in other words, we have this nice formula right here, which is the integral from 0 to infinity of log x over ax squared plus bx plus a dx is equal to 0. So let's jump into proving this integration trick. So I've started with the left-hand side over here, and I'm going to make a substitution first. So the substitution that I will make is x equals to 1 over t. So notice that means that dx will be equal to minus 1 over t squared dt. And then furthermore, natural log of x will be the natural log of 1 over t, which is minus the natural log of t. And so those are the three main things that we will use to transform this integral. So we've got our original substitution, what happens to the differential component, and then what happens to this logarithmic component. So let's see what we've got. So we've got the integral. I'll hold off on the bounds of integration. The numerator is now minus natural log of t, and the denominator will be a over t squared plus b over t plus c, and then my dx component is minus 1 over t squared times dt. Now let's see what's happening with the bounds of integration. So notice as x approaches 0 from above, which is what's ha happening right here, we have t approaching positive infinity. So that means our lower bound of integration is minus infinity like that. And then let's also notice that as x approaches positive infinity, t will be approaching 0 from above. So that makes our upper bound of integration here 0. Now we're going to do a couple of things to simplify this. I'll take this t squared and multiply it through to the terms in this polynomial in 1 over t that's in the denominator. And then I'll also take this minus sign that's right here and I'll use it to switch the order of the bounds of integration like that. So let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with the integral from 0 to infinity. Sorry, that should have been a plus infinity. And then we'll have minus natural log of t in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we'll have a plus b times t plus c times t squared. And then we'll have dt. Now, all that's left to do is maybe do a substitution back into our original variable. So we can now just make the trivial substitution x equal t. And then bring our minus sign out and then reorder our denominator. And we'll see that we have exactly this formula right here. And then as we discussed before, if c and a are the same, that implies that this integral is equal to 0. Okay, so we've got this trick taken care of. And now we're ready to move on to our main goal. And that will be the integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x over x squared plus 2x plus 9. So notice we could immediately apply this integration trick, but we'd be left with an integral that has essentially the same difficulty to solve. But if we can somehow transform this thing so that the denominator is somewhat symmetric, then we can maybe make it simpler using this red boxed equation right here. So let's see how we can do that maybe. So let's go ahead and make the following substitution. That will be x equal 3 times t. So let's see what that gives us. That'll give us this integral from 0 to infinity. Now we'll have natural log of 3 times t over 9t squared plus, so that'll be 6t plus 9, 
and then we'll have dx will be 3dt. So I'll take my three, bring it out here, and then write a dt here like that. Now we can use some logarithm rules to simplify this. We can in fact take this log 3t and write it as log three plus log t like that and then split this up into two separate integrals. So let's maybe do that all at once. We'll have three times log three, and then the integral from zero to infinity of one over nine t squared plus six t plus nine dt. So let's see, that will be from this term, this log three term multiplied by the three, and then obviously that constant is factored out. And then next we'll have this as plus three times the integral from zero to infinity of log t over nine t squared plus six t plus nine dt. So we've split our original goal integral up into these two integrals after doing a change of variables. Now I wanna notice that this second integral has exactly the form of this red box. Since it has that form, we know that it's immediately equal to zero. And again, that's because it's equal to its negative due to this integration trick. So I can take this thing, just throw it away. We know that that is immediately equal to zero. And now we're left with this integral, which isn't really too bad. It's just the integral of a rational function. We can use the standard techniques of integrals of rational functions in order to solve this. We'll just have to be careful about how to work with this denominator. So maybe what I'd like to start off by doing is uh, dividing a nine out of the denominator. So notice that'll give us a one over nine, which can combine with this three to give us a one over three. So now we'll have natural log of three over three, and then the integral from zero to infinity of one over t squared plus two thirds t plus one dt like that. So factoring a nine out of this will give us just one t squared. Factoring a nine out of this will give us a one. And then factoring a nine out of this will give us two thirds. Notice I've left myself a little bit of a gap here. And that's because we want to complete the square so that we can use maybe an inverse tangent type antiderivative to finish this thing off. So how do we complete the square here? So we'll take two thirds, half it and then square it, add and subtract. So half of two thirds is one third, squared is one ninth. So that means we need to add one ninth, but we'll also have to subtract one ninth just to be sure that we don't make any changes. Keeping in mind that we're thinking about the grouping as such. Now let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with the natural log of three over three. Then we have the integral from zero to infinity then we can wrap this denominator up as t plus one third quantity squared, and then plus eight over nine, like that. Now let's take this integral, move it to the top, and we'll finish it off. Okay, so, so far we've got our goal integral in this form. So it's natural log of three over three, integral zero to infinity of one over t plus third squared plus eight over nine. Now I wanna maybe get the fractions out of the denominator there, and I can do that by multiplying this entire denominator by a nine, but that means we're gonna to have to multiply a nine on the numerator as well. I'll take it outside. So let's see what that leaves us with. That'll leave us with three natural log of three. That's what's happening outside. And then we'll have the integral from zero to infinity of one over well, bringing this nine inside of the perfect square will give us a three t plus one. And that's because when you bring it into the perfect square, you have to take its square root. So now we have three t plus one quantity squared plus eight dt. Now we're gonna make another substitution and that'll be the substitution u equals three t plus one. That means that du is equal to three dt. In other words, dt is equal to one third du. So let's maybe look at each of those substitution parts that we need right there. Now that means that we can replace this dt with a one third du and we'll have this three right here, we'll cancel with this three that is in the denominator. Then furthermore, we can take this three t plus one and replace it just with u. And then now we'll need to talk about the bounds of integration. 
So notice as t approaches infinity, u approaches infinity. So we don't need to worry about the upper bound. But if t is equal to 0, u will be equal to 1. So we need to change that lower bound of integration to the number 1. I'll maybe put that in orange so it matches. So let's see what we have. We have natural log of 3, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over u squared plus 8 du. Now I'm going to actually perform one more substitution here just to make the answer at the end look a little bit nicer. Here I'm going to take u and replace it with 1 over y. So notice that means u squared will be 1 over y squared, and it means du will be minus 1 over y squared dy. Furthermore, if u is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, but as u approaches infinity, y is approaching 0 from above. So that changes this integral, which looks like it's over an infinite region to 1 over a finite region, so that's like a little bit nicer to work with. So that'll leave us natural log of 3, and then we'll have 1 over the square root of 8 times y quantity squared plus 1 dy. Where I've done a bit of simplification, like multiplied this minus 1 through to switch our bounds of integration, the y squared through, and I've also taken 8 and written as the square root of 8 squared. But in this form, we can actually take the antiderivative pretty easily. Now, if you guys want to, you can do one more substitution here. You could do a substitution which looks something like this. z equals the square root of 8 times y. So that means dy will be 1 over the square root of 8 dz, like that. So let's see what that will leave us with. So we'll have the natural log of 3 over the square root of 8, which we're getting from this. And then we'll have the integral from 0 to the square root of 8 of 1 over z squared plus 1 dz, where I used my change of variables to change the upper bound of integration. But now we know the antiderivative of 1 over z squared will be inverse tangent of z, evaluated at square root of 8, and evaluated at 0. We'll use the fact that evaluated at 0 is equal to 0 to finally give us a solution of natural log of 3 arctan of root 8 over root 8. And that's our final answer. And that's a good place to stop.